Hi, I'm Daisuke Wai from Osaka University. First of all, I would like to thank you all the committee members and volunteers who work hard to make this conference happen. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about our active marker technology for dynamic projection mapping. This is the overview of our technique. We embed optical fibers in a projection object to guide blinking light, which is emitted from LEDs attached at the, the bottom of the surface. The fibers and the object are jointly fabricated using a multi-material 3D printer. First, we model a projection object. The most important parts of this process are marker placement and fiber routing. Then we fabricate the object by a multi-material 3D printer. The object's pose is estimated by the captured markers, and finally we project a texture onto the surface according to the, the estimated pose. So previously, most uh, motion capture systems were applied for dynamic projection mapping applications. Because multi-camera system is robust for occlusion, the projection surface shape is not restricted. The measurement area of mocap system can be large by increasing the number of cameras. On the other hand, the mocap system needs to synchronize multiple cameras, so the system becomes too complex to install in our daily environment. Another approach applies only a single camera to track a projection target, so the system becomes much simpler. These systems apply spatial patterns in representing the IDs of markers. There is a trade-off between the marker size and working range. The markers need to be large enough to be identified by a camera, so it is necessary to place a marker on a relatively planar surface to avoid occlusion. Small markers relax the, the restriction, but they significantly limit the working range. The trade-off of the spatial markers can be solved by applying an active marker. Active marker emits a temporal blinking pattern of infrared light to represent the marker ID. A naive implementation would be to embed LEDs in a projection object at all the marker positions. However, installing multiple LEDs and wires under the surface is tedious. And there is a unique issue of projection mapping. Markers shouldn't be noticeable to human observers when the surface is projected. The noticeable markers significantly degrade the projection mapping of image quality. But all the, all the approaches introduced before are suffered by this problem. So this paper proposes an active marker approach, which does not require manual installation works. Specifically, a user only needs to attach near-infrared LEDs at the bottom of the projection object. The infrared light from the LEDs is guided through optical fibers to the surface of the projection object. The object and the fibers are jointly printed out from a multi-material 3D printer. The aperture of an optical fiber is typically very small, so it is rarely noticeable to human observers and the marker can be placed on a strongly, strongly curved surface. The blinking patterns can be recognized by a camera placed at a wide range of distances from markers, so the working range can be large. To reduce the number of LEDs, multiple markers are connected to the same LED, so they share the same blinking pattern. We assign two types of IDs to each marker. The first is marker ID, which is unique to each marker, shown as red. The second is pattern ID, which is same for markers connected to the same LED, shown as blue. In offline, we make a lookup table storing these IDs and the sequence of spatially adjacent pattern IDs. So for example, uh, marker C emits the third pattern and is surrounded by markers emitting the patterns of 2, 2, 3, 1, 2. We recognize each marker from captured image sequence. First, we measure each pattern ID from the sequence of the infrared light. 
and the sequence of adjacent pattern IDs. Then we search the lookup table for a marker ID that has the same pattern ID and the most similar pattern ID sequence. The similarity of the pattern ID sequence is evaluated by the Levenstein distance. This particular marker is recognized as marker B. Marker's locations are significantly affect the pose estimation performance, so they need to be carefully determined. So at first, we compute the suitability map for the marker locations based on the visibility from various viewing directions. Then we select points on the surface as candidate markers. The candidate markers places hold local maximum suitab suitability values within a predefined area. We need the restriction of the predefined area because the fiber has a certain amount of internal volume. The distance between two markers on the surface should be large enough to avoid collision of fibers. We then optimize the, the pattern ID assignment to the candidate markers. The objective is that the marker ID recognition robustly works for various viewing directions. We apply genetic algorithm to the optimization, where the, the array of pattern IDs is a chromosome. We discard candidate markers if they reduce the, the objective value. For more details of the, the optimization, please refer to the paper. The figure shows the result. In the beginning of the optimization, some markers are not recognized correctly in the simulation. After sufficient re uh, evolutions, all the markers are recognized correctly by the optimized pattern IDs. After uh, marker locations are determined, we solve another problem, that is optical fiber routing. The optical fibers connect each infrared LED to corresponding markers, which share the same pattern ID. If the fiber routes are determined like this, there are several problems, such as a part of a very small curvature radius, causing significant loss of infrared light, a part locating outside the object, and a collision between fibers transmitting different blinking patterns. So we, we carefully design the fiber, fibers to solve these problems to obtain the optimal fiber routing. We use a multi-material 3D printer that can print an object using transparent material. This is the structure of our optical fiber. We apply the clear and support materials as the core and cladding of our optical fiber, respectively. To avoid crosstalk of infrared light leaked from fibers inside an object, we cover the fibers within, with a thin black layer. We cover the object surface uh, with a thin white layer to increase both light diffusion of infrared light and the invisibility of the markers for human observers. The thickness of the materials are determined through several trials and errors. For the root optimization, at first it is necessary to know the light throughput of the fiber. The light throughput is dependent on the length and the curvature of the fiber based on Lambert pair law. We printed fibers with different lengths and curvatures and measured their light throughputs. Considering the use of fibers for active markers, we characterize the throughput as the longest distance between the end of a fiber and the camera, where the emitted blinking pattern of infrared light can be detected. The measurements are fitted to our model based on the Lambert pair law. And for more details, please refer to the paper. The finally, the fiber loot is optimized by minimizing this objective. The first term works to increase the light throughput. The second term works to increase the distance from each fiber to the surface. The third term 
works to increase the distance between fibers transmitting different linking patterns. The last term is a regularizer. These are the examples of our marker placement and fiber routing results for three different objects. The colored lines represent the fibers, and fibers with the same color are connected to the same LED. We can confirm that the fibers of different pattern IDs did not collide with each, with each other, and all the fibers were placed inside the object. In particular, in, in the bunny object, uh, fibers were successfully routed through the narrow neck. The 3D models are then fabricated from a multi-material 3D printer. We prepared seven small holes in the bottom surfaces of the objects as LED sockets. The same hole layout was shared among the objects so that the same base component consisting of an electrical circuit battery and LEDs is reusable. So the video shows projected results on two different objects, bunny and, and building. We, we, we can confirm that the textures are mapped correctly when the objects move and even when they are occluded by hand. This is the result of the bunny object. When the object is covered by a hand, large part of the object is covered by the hand, uh, still texture is still uh, robustly uh, mapped onto the object. And this is the result of uh, the building object. So it can track a relatively large uh, volume and it also tracks the rotation. And again, the object can be covered by hand like this. So we evaluated how accurately our system can estimate the pose of a projection object to check the tracking range. As a result, the system could estimate the position of each object with a small error relative to the translation distance whose range was one meter in our experiment. So we confirmed that the system works in a relatively large tracking, tracking range. We checked how robust the system works under occlusion. When an object is occluded, the number of markers captured by the camera becomes smaller. If the number becomes lower than four, then the system cannot estimate the pose of the, of the object based on based on solving the PNP problem. In this experiment, we covered more than half area of the object. In such a tough situation, the system could capture more than four markers and robustly estimate the pose of the object. So we confirm that the system is robust for occlusion. And this is the summary of my presentation. So we propose an active marker technology for dynamic projection mapping and the technical contributions are there are two uh, technical contributions one is marker placement uh, optimization and the second one is fiber root optimization and interesting future directions are to use more transparent material which is very recently available and to apply this technology to a flexible object such as a soft robot I hope our framework will be applied in many fields in the near future. Thank you.